Hello, and welcome back to the spoiler cast, the show where we talk about movies and we don't care about spoiling them. Because it's the spoiler cast, where we talk about movies and we don't care about spoiling them. Because it's the... Uh, sorry. You know. You know. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was stuck in a loop. <laughs> um, my name is Tobias, and with me as always is my sister and trusty co-host, uh, Rebecca. Hello. Hello. And today we are talking about a movie we're both kind of uh, looking forward to? Yeah. Or at least intrigued by. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'm me more than you, because I like the the movie connected to this more than you did, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we, we finally managed to get our hands on it, because now it's online. Because uh, it's never coming to cinemas here in Sweden, for some reason. Probably not, unless it's yeah. like next summer or something. Yeah. We are, of course, talking about her. X prequel, right? Yes, that was uh, that was like uh, ma- made up while they were in quarantine in New Zealand, waiting to shoot X. From what I hear, at yeah, least. apparently. Mia Goth and Ty West were like having Zoom calls about uh, Pearl's background, and it kind of became a, a, a script, which they just shot in shot in secret, and hoping that A twenty four would like pick it up, <laughs> so they wouldn't have spent all that money. Um, and they did, of course. Uh, and, uh, now, now we're going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, we got to talk a little bit about X again. Um, because I think I misunderstood a certain part of that movie. Uh, which sure. Then, which then made me misunderstand what Pearl was actually about. Because, uh... When we, when we talked about Pearl, you can listen to that episode. Just look for the spoiler cast. X, I mean. Sorry. When we talked about X earlier. <laughs> yes. This um, is going to be an we, issue. <laughs> yeah. We were both confused that why Mia Goth was playing the old lady, Pearl. Yeah. It, it seemed like, unnecessary. Yeah. Um, it makes sense now, though. Um, sure. But I... I, I misconstrued it that... Um, that Maxine, Mia Goth's character in X, was, I mean, not that she was Pearl, but, like, they kept talking, you, you saw a priest on the TV talking about how they stole his child and she became a degenerate. Yeah. That's Maxine they're talking about, right? Yes. Because in the end they show her, a picture. Did they call her Pearl? Or Because Maxine isn't her real name, right? No, I think Maxine is her... Star name, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Her, her actor stage name. name. Yeah. Um, um, I, don't know, no, I don't know if they called her Pearl. I don't remember. Yeah, but maybe e- they did, way, but I don't remember. I got that confused, also because Mia Goth played both characters, even though one is <laughs> yeah. very old, one is not. So when they when they started talking about Pearl um, and the backstory to her, I was like, oh, so it's it's the backstory to how Pearl became Maxine. I got it confused that Pearl was Maxine. But she wasn't. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. They're not the same character. They're, they're just the same, yeah, no. similar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the whole I think that's the theme of these movies. Yes. Um so I thought that yeah, I thought this movie was gonna be the backstory to how she became a stripper in the bayou, which is where she starts in, in X. And then yeah. the third movie was gonna be like the finishing story, because the third movie that's coming next year, I think, or the year after that, it's called Maxine. It was like yes, ah, with so it's triple a trilogy. X. Yeah, so it's a, <laughs> it's a trilogy about this Maxine character. But no, the first one is actually about the old lady when she was young. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the prequel is about the old lady when she yes. was young. Yes, the prequel is, yes. Um <laughs> there's a problem with prequels and sequels and yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, yeah. So the, the the plot is really if you, if you if you've seen X, this is the uh, the downfall of Pearl, basically how that the how the scary... old lady became this weird and scary. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there are I some suppose. thematic th- thematic um, um, uh, li- likenesses. What do you call it? Um, thematic uh... similarities. Similarities. Thank you. Similarities <laughs> to the Maxine character. Um, so yeah, that's that's really just the the plot of the movie. There isn't a lot of plot. There's a lot of uh, character stuff. Character, it's yes. very character driven. Um, so I don't, we don't really need to talk about the plot that much. Um, no. I think we just we should just get into 
what we thought of it. So, what did you think of Pearl? I... Uh, well, I'm not super thrilled. I, it was a bit slow, in my opinion. Thank God it was only one hour forty long. Yeah. Um, it had... It felt... You can sort of feel that the movie is it is written in in um what's it called in 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 together by by Ty West and Mia Goth because it's very focused on Mia Goth and what she can do it feels like almost mm. and every other character is very basic very one dimensional and has barely anything to do in the movie. Well, well okay. I have some issues with that, but we'll get to that. <laughs> and also, I think uh, you can definitely tell that it's a it's a quarantine movie because yeah, other than uh, the one scene, or I guess two scenes at the cinema and the one scene in the church, everything basically takes place at that house. And there's like three people yeah. in the movie at the most. And even even when they are in public, a lot of people are wearing masks because they <laughs> yeah they timed it so to speak with um, the the was it the Spanish flu. Yeah, Spanish flu. It takes place in 1918, so you yeah, have to kind of mirror what's going on right now, which I thought was clever. It was clever. It was clever. But it was um, a little bit too on the nose also. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they were obviously very, very influenced by what was going on while they yeah. wrote this. Yeah, sure. They wrote this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I like that part. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I know what you mean when you say it's a little slow. It's like the first... Hour and like twenty minutes almost is 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 very like there's not much happening. Um, no. It's mostly just Pearl, you know. It's it's a, it's a drama up until yeah. the last twenty minutes um, about Pearl and her her, her quietly suffering um, uh, her mother's well, uh, ill will or ire, I suppose. Quietly um, wanting to do something else, basically. Yeah. I don't know if uh, she's suffering that much, to be honest. Well, her her mom seems to like they hint at. Pearl having like issues, which they don't really get into that much. No. Her mother talks about it. Um, I was course... I was wondering if her mother just meant that she's uh, I don't know she's sexual and she's young and married and she had a miscarriage. Maybe that's the issue. I don't know. Yeah, because they mentioned that later. Yeah, so I'll, I didn't. I didn't I think that's part of it. I didn't think she was like, yeah, you're mentally ill. We know you're psychotic. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think they knew that much, but they're they're hinting at it. You know. Yeah. Um. And then, um, uh, uh, yeah, and, and the mother kind of uh, 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 resenting Pearl for actually having like dreams, which she yes. never ha- she never got that because her husband got did not mention what, but he's, he's like sick. a paraplegic. Yeah, he's sick. So instead of like having this wonderful romantic marriage that Pearl eventually would have with Howard, Howard, yeah, Howard, right, yeah, her her husband who was away in, in Europe fighting the war. The Great War, um, yeah, she's stuck taking care of this, yeah, this this vegetable basically for the rest of her life, yeah. So she she resents Pearl as well. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of anger stewing in that farmhouse. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, which which I which I enjoyed, but yes, it's a little like you because you are kind of since it is it's a prequel to a pretty good like horror slasher movie. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're expecting kind of, something. Yeah, you you were kind of also expecting it to be in the same vein, even though it's not a '70s movie; it's a 1910s movie. Um, yeah, but you can still it, have, like, it could still have the same feeling, you know, even yeah. though it takes place in another decade. Yes. Yes. Um, so I yeah I, you're you're caught a little off guard, especially that first. I was like, okay, so when are we gonna get to the horror stuff, the killing? <laughs> to be um, honest, when they first when the the first dialogue is in German, and I went, yeah. shit, am I watching a dub version? <laughs> yeah. But no, then they she replied in English. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Does then, that have anything to do with it, by the way, that, that the mother's German? Does that have anything to do with the war in the 1980s? 18s? I don't remember if that's when the Nazis were around. No, there weren't any Nazis then. Um, okay. Germany so it's like, is this, is this going to have something to do with Nazi sympathizers? Is that what the mo- why the mom doesn't want to leave the house? But no, it's the, it's the no. Spanish flu. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they weren't... <laughs> the First World War is kind of crazy because there weren't really a clear 
main antagonist, so to speak. But I know that the right? Germans were on the bad side, so to speak. Um, so there's, of course, a little bit of that in there as well. That there's this German family living out there, and you know they're kind of isolated and everything. You know? Yeah. Um, and, but that uh, wasn't the main issue. That was just no. my first thought when I heard German. I was like, what's going on here? But no, that doesn't really have anything to do with it. No. It's just adding on to the rest, really. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, the, the we we do get, and you know, spoilers, I suppose, we do get to the actual, like, horror part, in, literally in the last, like, 15 minutes, basically. Yeah. There are some hints earlier on, um, but not, you know, there's, there doesn't really start until those last 15 minutes. and Maybe I 20, the, I don't remember. Yeah, 20, 20 or 15 minutes, yeah. Um, and I got I got to say, yes, I was a little... Also, because I watched it, I had like three hours of sleep. Because <laughs> um, I... Yeah, whatever. And I woke up early and was like, I have enough time to watch Pearl now before I start work. I should do that. But there were moments where I was really struggling to stay awake because I was so tired. So that was dumb. I should have yeah. watched it later. But whatever. Um, so for that, yes, I also felt like it was a little slow. But I got to say, um, the last the last act, so to speak, I perked up, really. Um, and I loved how the third act really tied the story together. There's that long one take of Pearl mm, talking to yeah. Howard so that's the, that's like sister-in-law. the one scene I really liked, to be honest. Yeah, because um, it, it it was it was that kind of scene. Really, really everything after the audition at the church. Um, uh, yeah, everything after or yeah. The, well, because the that's when that's well. when you know the. <laughs> when it when it what's it called in English? The drop and run over. <laughs> yeah, it well, it, the straw that broke the camel. Yeah, back, that's yeah. when it. Yeah, that's when the breaking point is literally. Yeah. Or the cup ran over. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, it it really it really like tied the first hour and hour and a half together really really well, and um, <clears throat> I, I yeah you haven't asked me, but I'll tell you. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. <laughs> well, I, I could see that based on your um, <laughs> letterbox review. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gave it four and a half and just one sentence. Mia Goth yeah. has the X Factor. <laughs> yes, because, you know, that's the whole thing. Which they mention in both movies, you got to have the X Factor. Yeah. And the, ch- the people at the audition in the church says, you don't have that X Factor. Yeah. Eh? Well, the guy, uh, the movie theater guy kind of said she had. Yeah. And in X, Maxine says herself, I, I got that X factor. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, because, cause, um, wow, uh, Mia Goth, I've always, I've always liked her ever since I first saw her in, uh, what's it called, A Cure for Wellness. See, I didn't um, remember that that was her. Oh, okay. Um, but I, have, I haven't seen her in a lot of stuff. I always liked her because she's kind of quirky, you know? But I always thought she was kind of in in X. She's good, but I didn't get the feeling that that character worked with her somehow. I mean, it does later on, but it, it's 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 not quite. You mean Maxine, right? Maxine, yes, Maxine, yeah. Um, yeah. Especially, I thought her her southern accent was off in that movie. It sounds weird. Yeah, but maybe maybe it is uh, just an accent I haven't I hadn't heard before. I don't know. Um, I mean, it might also be that <laughs> Mia Goth is what is she? She's like British, Brazilian, something, something, something Canadian. Something. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of combinations there, and she's lived all over the place apparently. So her accent might be a little bit influenced by that as well. Yeah. Um, but in Pearl, she gives the fucking performance of a lifetime. It is insane how good she is in the movie um and since the movie is it's it's very small she 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 really takes up like you know her performance is like 85 percent of the movie basically so yeah that's why the movie is so good to me but she's so fucking good she has to be 85 percent of the movie because there's nothing else in the movie yeah, and that's why it's important that her performance is so good yeah but that's why i don't think it is that good though I think that you're just seeing what they want you to see, in this case, just her. They're, that's all they have, so that's all you notice. You don't notice that there's not much going on. 
But that's the thing. A lot is going on with the character, Pearl. It's yeah, character but driven. not. It, it's it's not explained enough, though. I don't know. I feel what, like what? it's 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 we uh, we like you said we don't know why she is the way she is really. I mean, she has an overprotect well, not overprotective, but a, an overbearing mother. Yeah. And you can understand the mother's reasoning for everything straight up. Like, it's it's obvious. Uh, a mother who feels like she's in the wrong continent, probably. She's yeah. married to a man that she has to now take care of, obviously. She has a daughter who feels ungrateful because she dreams of bigger things. That's a common thing, you know, in movies yeah. specifically. And uh, the, that may, puts a strain on the relationship. And it's it's a weird relationship in general. Every emotion in that house is just off it's it's basic and then yeah pearl is it's it's the classic wanting to get away but instead of just running away she kills everyone i don't i don't there's not much going on <laughs> that we haven't like seen before but then yeah we have this extreme character because pearl is an extreme character yeah she's not your everyday uh, girl next door she's no. obviously <laughs> lost in the head somewhere <laughs> she's got issues yeah, yeah yeah yes because you wouldn't go to that those extremes you would have just run away or accepted your faith yeah fate not faith fate, yeah. fate um so there's yeah there's there's something but i don't i don't know if it's i, I don't know if i'm if it's just because the only other role i can see mia goth in is x as maxine and pearl i suppose and I didn't really see her as Pearl in X, you know, because we couldn't really see that it is that it was her because of all the makeup. Yeah. So I I, I don't know if her acting is it. It feels like this is the only thing she's gonna be able to do now. She's gonna be typecast as this weirdo, very pretty but psychotic girl. Yeah, I hope. I hope not. Um, because that's all I see at the moment, and I don't like it. Because it, I don't know if she's good enough to be that, or if she's just pretty. Um, I, the, the, the movies I've seen her in, uh, just to, to, trying to like um, recap her, her, her acting ability. I've seen her in Nymphomaniac. She's in Volume 2. Um, I saw her in... Oh, she's in Everest? Yeah, the apparently. Everest movie. I don't know. She plays Meg. I don't remember. I did. I wasn't a huge fan of that movie. I thought it was okay, so I don't remember her. I guess she plays like someone's kid. Anyway, um, that's of course uh, a cure for wellness. That's the first time I. Well, I guess I saw her before then, but um, that's the first that, time I saw her, and I didn't even notice. I didn't realize that that's her. Yeah, that was that was the first time I noticed the name Mia Goth. That's why because it's she has a cool name. I'll give her that. Yes, that's <laughs> also part of it. But then she was in Suspiria. Um, the the new version of Suspiria, um, and I did take notice over there, and then some movies I haven't I haven't seen High Life yet. I really should watch High Life. Um, it's that sci fi horror drama with uh, Robert Pattinson. Oh right, oh, it's um, an A twenty four. We'll have to watch it yeah, eventually. Yeah, and then <laughs> the, yeah, there's a bunch of movies I didn't watch. Oh, uh, and then X, and then Pearl. Yeah, um, and yeah, I. I think she's done different enough roles, but there hasn't been one where she was really the main character until now. Uh, even exactly. X, it, it feels more like um, uh, what's her Jenna Ortega's the yes, main character at first until she dies. So spoilers, yeah. I guess for that movie. But um, I think that's a that's a that's a that's intentional. You're supposed yes. to think that she's the because you know she's the quiet good girl. And she has recently been in other horror films, so she's the the new up and coming scream queen. Yeah, but then now but then they, 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 they flip it her. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I I don't think she's going to be typecast. Um, or at least I don't hope she. I hope she won't be. Um, I just think that this is her first like her her breakout role. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people say that is X, but I'd say she's much better in this. Um, even though she got, I, I guess she got famous for X, but this is well. Her, the, like, to the be big fair, role. Pearl and X are more or less recorded in the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's also a thing. Like they're very, they're very connected, and 
And um and Maxine is being filmed right now apparently. Yes. So that's going to as well be just this basically. In yeah. another setting, hopefully, though, because in this time, I think she's in Los Angeles, actually. She's in Hollywood, yeah. Actually pursuing her career as an actress. Yeah. Um, so I, after Maxine, we might be able to see her do other things. But at the moment, this is all she is. She is yeah, sure. Pearl if, slash Maxine, and that's it. Yeah, well, that's because they rec- they made these two movies at the same time, and they had this idea for a third one. So, yeah, there's a lot of movies at the same time. But I, st- I, 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 I still she think- might not be typecast, but at the moment, that's all I see her as. And unfortunately, to me, she's more mostly just a pretty face who plays uh, a Sakari character, which goes over the top. So she's allowed to act over the top. I don't know if I can see her play a character like um, something normal. I don't know. She wouldn't have been <laughs> able to play Rose in Titanic, you know? Um, I mean. But we haven't. I have. I... That's not that how it feels right now. I we yeah, haven't seen her do it. So maybe she can. Exactly. We haven't seen too much of her stuff yet. That's why I think. Yeah, probably. Um, like I haven't seen Magpie or The Survivalist or Marrowbone. Maybe she's. Maybe those are those kind of roles. I don't know. Um, I think those are small roles, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, of course. Um, and that's that's the we whole. We need thing, to see right? her in a leading role where she's something other than Maxine or Pearl. Yeah. Sure. Until I can. Uh, until then, unfortunately, I'm not going to be super psyched about her. But once okay. I see that and she performs, perhaps, perhaps, I'm not going to say she won't be able to. But I, I also want to say then um, why I, why I don't think I feel the same way is <laughs> because I think. Maxine and Pearl are very different in the way she performs them. Um, they have they have very similar themes to their characters. I mean, there's there's obviously a through line um, of oh like um, uh, uh, fulfilling your dreams, like well, yeah, where where, where Pearl kind of um, let's talk a little bit about themes. Because <laughs> Pearl obviously has dreams of becoming... She wants to act in the... Or dance in the, in the picture shows, you know. Yes. Um, but she wants to in, be a star. Yeah, but in but because of the rejection at that church audition, um, instead of actually pursuing those those um, those dreams, she just... Uh, she, she, takes, she takes her frustration out, so to speak, <laughs> on her family. Um, yeah. And, and, and everyone I mean, who she wronged did, her, basically. She did tell her mother before the audition that if I don't get this one I'll come back and I will never speak of my dreams again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So instead so, she, that, so instead then her her focus becomes to you know live live a happy life, you know, with with, yeah. with Howard. Uh problem is, you know, there's 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 bodies in the, in, the, in the house. Yeah. Um Oh, but Howard is the the husband in X, right? Yes, which the sound pointed that on Letterbox, like, "Wow, Howard is really devoted to to Pearl for st- you know staying after finding out she's an axe murderer." Um, but ah, that's a detail, you know. Once again, that's because they already had the script for uh, for X, and and Pearl had a, had a husband, so you know they had to have Howard be the husband in, in Pearl as well. Yeah. You know. And I mean, they do they do point it out throughout the movie that this Howard's dream was just to have like a simple life on a farm, and Pearl's family home seemed perfect to take over once her parents are too old. Yeah, so and now he comes you know, home and they're dead. Perfect. He has a farm, and the yeah, wife is exactly. still there, and all she wants to do now is have a good life with him because she, she regrets everything she just did in the past well day, yeah. hours. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then that, of course, you know, she is content with that life, um, obviously, up until 1978, 60 years later, when this woman called Maxine shows up with her friends, who looks a lot like a young Pearl. Oh. Yeah, she reminds her of herself. Yeah, and that's a lot. They, I remember them they t- bringing that the, up a lot yeah. in, in, in the, towards the end of, of X. Um, and how, yeah, once again, the resentment boils up and she wants to kill, she wants to kill Pearl. Because once again, she well, kind of wants, wants to, to kill Maxine. No, oh, sorry, I want to kill Maxine, <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, Pearl wants to kill Maxine. Exactly. Because she's like, you, if I can't be happy, you can't be either. Exactly. Um, because, she, yeah, she wants to kill that ambition that starts bubbling she, up in her again. 
she takes over the same idea that her mother had. If I can't have a good life, I, if I have to stay home and take care of my sick husband and my ungrateful daughter, yeah. you will not be allowed to follow your dreams either. And also, I th- I'm, I vaguely remember in X, um, her like talking about like how, how dreams, like you, there's no point in having dreams because they'll, you'll never succeed anyway. Yeah. Um, which to me always felt like, ah, uh, Pearl tried at some point but failed. Maybe uh, having that be some sort of comment on, you know, how women are treated in the industry. Yes, but now that's in what Pearl, I thought too. Out, yeah, in Pearl it turns out it was just rejection. But, you know, that still works. It still works. Sure, sure. But I, I, I expected more of that in Pearl because yeah, I don't think sure. I actually saw a trailer for Pearl, to be honest. I, I think I only I heard of it yeah. and went, okay, we'll have to watch that because yeah. we need to know why Pearl is so weird in the in, in X and why it's... there's a connection between her and Maxine. Yes. So I, I imagined like, because we do have in Pearl, we we have this whole, um the, the projectionist dude, I don't remember if he has a name. Uh-huh. Um, Who's kind of taking starts... advantage of her. <clears throat> yeah, he is taking advantage of her and he's he's planting the seed of I'm going to take you to Europe and make a star out of you in this yeah. new, um, exciting movie genre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he shows her Putting it vaguely. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, and everyone's going to love me because he says that that's going to be the new big thing. Yeah. Even though it's not legal in America. Well, that might, you know. No, it, it, well, yeah, it's, it's true, yeah. He says that at least. Or she asks, is it legal? And he's like, yes. not here, but in no. Europe. <laughs> yeah. Which um, should be red flags, but, you know, she just hears fame and fortune. Yeah, I'll go with you. Yeah. I thought yeah. it would be more of that, though. I thought we would see that part of the industry as well. Yes. But we only but- get that one promise and then him freaking out when he sees the rotten pig. Yeah. More or less. And, the, you know, um, there, there's all the... There's, there's, oh, there's, right. there's, there's the noise. Bad, there's bad omens in that house. Yes. <laughs> Especially because we know what happened. But, you know, he, he, he gets that feeling like, eh, something's, something's wrong with this girl. Yeah. Uh, I gotta move on. <laughs> Never or at least dick get out of here for now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I, yes, I agree that it would make sense to have her, like, actually get into the industry a bit and then be, you know, um, used and abused, so to speak. Yeah. But, but, two things. You want to talk about having been done before? That's ha- that's been yes, done before. definitely. And, it has. And also, it's a super low budget quarantine movie, so they sure, couldn't really do sure. that. But so in I, X, they, they, they hint at her having more of a dance career, because they have the whole ballet things, and you see her tapes yeah. of her dancing, but where is that? Well... That could have happened, you know, in between After Pearl this? and X. Yes, um, I don't say that they got to do a Pearl two or something. No, 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 God no. We can, we can, we can, we can we gather can that stuff happened. Yeah, uh, maybe they'll bring that up in Maxine. I don't know. Maybe you know we get something. You know, some. It like could also a just cold be open with Pearl or something. Something. Yeah, I guess it could also just be something that wasn't actually true in X. That wasn't her. That was just true. someone else she aspired to be. Yeah. Um, maybe all the shows she talked about were something she just put on at home for Howard. I don't know. Yeah, I also, I also though, I I, th- I think most of it is because of um, quarantine and budget restrictions. Sure. Yeah, but that's a shame. You sh- in I that case, couldn't they have waited a little bit and made this when they had more opportunities or possibilities? Well, they they. They didn't really have any opportunity. I don't think this movie would have been made if they weren't shooting it while they were doing X. I don't uh, maybe so. not. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, one of the actors, the, the the one who plays the mother. Yeah. She's not an actor. <laughs> she isn't. Oh no. right, she was the she's intimacy the, uh, coordinator. Yeah, who chose to? She she learned English, um, in a hurry. For the role, because they were like, "Well, we need someone who speaks German for some reason." I, you honestly, mean she I don't know why. German. She, yeah, but you said learned English. 
Ah, right. Sorry. German. Yeah, German. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand why. First of all, why does the character need to learn be German? Couldn't she just be American or something, or just because it was in the script? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but that's that's a weird detail to add when you don't have a German speaking actress. I don't know. But I mean, she apparently she got good at it. She yeah. It says she in, had the, me in the trivia she convinced two German members of the crew that she yeah. were actually <laughs> German. So yeah. Good on you, whoever. Uh, <laughs> Tandy Wright is the the actress. Well, yeah. Now she's an actress. Now she's an actress. Yeah. Um, I was gonna I was, I was gonna look her up. Like, have I seen her something else? She has actually acted before. Oh, okay, okay. She has done, but it's, it's small roles and a lot of TV stuff. Um, she's uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I was gonna look. She, I mean, she has more acting uh, credits than additional crew credits. But yeah, she's, uh, been true. A she's the mother in Love and Monsters. <laughs> what? I knew I knew her from somewhere. Yeah. That but is she's that. in like one scene in that sure, movie. Sure, <laughs> but I, I recognized her. Like, I, I've seen her somewhere. Okay, so that makes sense. I have seen her somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she's the queen in Jack the Giant Slayer. Did you ever watch yeah. that from no, 2013? Well, okay. No, no. So, uh, yeah, she's done small roles. Yeah, she, but she's she done a that. lot, though. To be honest, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, yeah. Because I don't think I don't think intimacy coordinator is a full time job. Um, mm, no, she, no. She's she's done it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, and doing it in an upcoming movie, the tank. <laughs> intimacy coordinator. Huh. Um, where were we? Oh wow, she was in Xena Warrior Princess. In one episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, still. <laughs> um, right. Yo, well, you're right. Uh, and also, I think why, why we don't get more about Pearl's exploits in the industry, if she ever had any, I, I think it's because um, they really want, like, the story of... It's not, a, it's not specifically a story about Pearl. It's not specifically a story about Maxine. I think it's just a story about... Um, <clears throat> A woman or women or you know re- representation of woman woman w- ah, womankind you now nah, not woman kind of woman but, <laughs> but you know, women in in the industry so you have uh, so so kind of and that's also why Pearl and Maxine is both played by Mia Goth because both of them are part of the journey sure so ha- yeah so you have the the beginnings where you're rejected. Um, I don't know. This is I'm just this I'm just pulling out of my ass right now. <laughs> um, because you yeah you rejected from the nice dancing or acting job, so you go into adult films, which Maxine is doing. Yeah, um, to try to at least you know at least get into the industry, and then you know, it's a it's a downfall from there. Based on I don't know what happens in Maxine though, so maybe there's something about that. I I think that Pearl and and Maxine. Are part of the same. They're, 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 they're one and the same, really, in spirit, well, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. So if if Pearl actually got into the industry, she would end up where Maxine is in X. If that makes any sense. That's why they had sure Mia Goth play both characters. No, I I I, I understood that too. That there's there's obviously like they're more or less the same person, just. Yeah different parts of them or different times of of the exactly. same character yes but and I... That, and I, I find that very uh very interesting and sure i found it more interesting in x i don't feel like pearl contributed a lot to that no and i gotta say that's also that's also um uh, something i i should recognize uh that Pearl as a standalone movie probably wouldn't be as effective no. for me as it was now. Um, they really, really need to be like they need to be a double feature, and in the future, I guess a triple feature. Yeah, um, probably. I mean, X works X on its works. own. Sure, obviously, yes. it's, it's the first obviously. movie; it usually does. Yeah. Uh, Pearl does not. No, it, which is a shame. It really is a companion piece, and I know we we us- we've talked about that before. That a movie needs to work in a vacuum, but this is a this is a very special um, occasion. Like, there's not often we get a movie 
where like while making a movie the director and star like has this idea of like oh we should basically like oh we we have so much more story to tell but we can't put that into the script now we'll just shoot another movie <laughs> and it's yeah I think that's an interesting experiment, and I th- I think that's also why I give it more leeway. Sure. I still don't think it worked properly. Uh, well, for it's, me, it's it did. <laughs> for me, it <laughs> yeah. did. I I was really intrigued by the fact that they just made this up on the spot, um, and it was as good as it was. And then, of course, like I said, Mia Goth's performance is. Uh, insane. I mean, she won't get a nomination, of course, because it's that no. kind of movie. But out of all the movies I've seen this year, pff, she blows every other uh, actress out of the water. I think. Oh wait, I have to actually look at maybe. What I've yeah, seen maybe that's a little. I've to... seen a lot of movies to just say that. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let me let me open up my watched in twenty twenty two video uh, yeah. list, which is ninety eight movies at the time. You have 98 from 2022? No, no, no. That I've watched for the first time in 2022. Okay. Because I have 89 (laughs) movies from 2022. Um, Yeah. No, I was going to say you have Alana Haim in Licorice Pizza. No. Mia Goth is better. No. You have um, uh, Amber Mid-Thunder in Prey. No. Mia Goth is better. Um, Who else has a great performance? Uh, I guess um, what's her name? Uh, Jesse Buckley in Men. I thought was really good. Nope. Mm. Mia Goth is better. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else sticks out? Yeah, no, no. no maybe I don't have a an actress that sticks out that much. No. To be honest. Um, I mean, no. Florence Pugh did a good job in Don't Worry, Darling. With considering yeah. what she had to work with, that's true. But that's also one of those movies that when the movie kind of rubs off on the actress, like, yeah, the movie sucked. She was good in it, but the movie sucked. <laughs> yeah, it sucked, but it was bad. It wasn't um, good. And what's her name? Uh, Daisy Edgar Jones. She was good in Fresh, but same thing there. The movie was okay. Um, so, but she here was we have not mo- that special in Where the Crawdads Sing. Oh, I still haven't seen that movie. So, but she was good in Fresh. Um, a lot of people liked, uh, what's her name? Laura Galan, I think you pronounce her name, or Laura Galan in, uh, what's it called? Sardita, or Piggy, as it's called in English. I thought she was uh, just that, fine. I didn't uh, see that yet. Yeah. No, I so, don't know. I yeah, don't know. I mean, just, the year is not over, obviously. There's all, there's more movies coming out that might impress more, but I see what you're saying. Yeah. I I'm think not she's... saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that, I, personally, it... Like I said in the beginning, it feels like this is just the same one more time, sort of. And I, it's it's very niche that I can't really overlook it as, as something specific at the moment. Because it feels very, this very is just niche. one thing. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, and I, I, I agree to some point. Like I said, uh, it, it, in a vacuum, this movie wouldn't work. It would be very boring. Yeah. Um, also, I have- gotta... There's a detail that throws me off a lot, oh. and it's it's an it's an uh, it's a it's a feature on Mia Goth that that fucks up for me. Oh, the fact that both Pearl and Maxine have bleached eyebrows. Well, I, maybe I didn't notice that because I don't. She has bleached eyebrows. Yeah. Are you? She well, she she doesn't have any eyebrows basically, but they're bleached. No, they're very thin. They're, I'm just looking at very picture. light. They don't look. They don't look bleached. They just look. Yeah, they're thin. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't fit the time for me. All right. It doesn't fit the character really. And they look bleached in certain scenes. So I don't know, I don't know. That that just throws that. me <laughs> off even more because <laughs> okay. it's it's supposed to be so far apart, but she looks just the same basically. Well, no. maybe no, yeah, she's dark haired in, in X as well. Yeah. I was about I to guess... say she's blonde, but no, she's not blonde. No, and I guess but I'm, I'm just looking at a, at a regular photo of her from some red carpet, Independent Spirit Awards. Um, 
I guess she's she has... always had very light and thin and and yes, light she has eyebrows. Very... Yeah, exactly. And I guess she has slightly lighter hair in real life, so maybe that's more yeah. complementary to her eyebrows. I don't know. Maybe those are kind of like makeup stuff that I don't notice, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> possibly, possibly. It, it threw me, me off. off though. Okay. But then when I started reading more about her, it it threw me off even more that she's sort of married to Shia LaBeouf and she has a kid with him. They're Apparently. <laughs> I know they were dating. Yeah. They're married? They well they there's there's some discussion regarding whether that's oh. legit or not. No, but they, they've they have filed at the same time they filed for divorced, the divorce. Yeah. And the kid is born after way after they started filing for divorce. So they're like on again, off again, married. Just adds to the weird in the, in general mm. <laughs> about her. Because like you said, this is her like big breakout role, but I don't feel like I know anything about her. I haven't heard anything about her except for these two weird parts. And then now, yeah, she's involved with Shia LaBeouf, who's become weird as of late. Yeah. Yeah, she she gave birth this year. Yeah. To her first child with Shia LaBeouf. Maybe they got back together or something. I don't know. Yeah. Because they, just... they met in 2013, 10 years ago almost. Exactly. And married, <laughs> so, appeared to get married in October 2016. Because it was like a, a Vegas marriage and people say that that's yeah. not legit but for then, some reason. Yeah, a local official claimed that the pair wasn't legally married, but instead a commitment ceremony was performed. In September 2018, it was announced that the couple had separated or separated and filed for divorce. Yeah, so maybe they just didn't want to be married. Maybe they just want to be a couple. I don't know. Then how do you how do you file for divorce? Either way, that just when I I I was already in like a, this is weird. I'm not sure I like her as an actress because I feel like she's only doing this one weird, over dramatic character. And then I read that and was like, yeah, maybe she's just weird. <laughs> well, yeah, she's obviously like that's <clears throat> she she's a little quirky. That's and I noticed yeah. when the first time I noticed her, like I said, in Cure for Wellness, I was like, yeah, she's kind of weird. And quirky. I need to rewatch that movie. Because I don't think I've seen it since we saw it in theaters. Um, it's much better than people say. I don't get why people don't like that movie. I think it's bullshit. I think it's it's not great, but it's much better than people give it credit for. Either way, um, back to Pearl. <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't know if I have much else to say. I think this is a movie that I I need to see more of her acting before I can appreciate it in this movie. But I, but but. Then we because there's the... two scenes that I really like, with her acting only. Yeah. One is obviously the dialogue. Holy shit. Monologue. That's where she shines. Monologue. Sorry, yeah, monologue. Yeah. yeah. That's where she shines. Amazing. And <laughs> the very last frame of her, which yes. is like almost two minutes long. I want to talk about that. Which is... of her just smiling and. You, you can tell that she's just waiting for Ty West to call cut. Yeah, because that was doesn't. the whole thing. He didn't call cut. And she's like, gotta hold this smile. But since the... Scenario... I'm, I'm also assuming the tears are because she's trying not to blink. Yeah, partly because she's trying not to blink. But, you know, that kind of becomes a character thing. Because she's putting on a face. You know, a happy face. Yeah, for sure, Howard. sure, sure. So I Definitely. think that's... One, one, once again, like, like... Yeah, this movie doesn't have a lot. But those two things, that monologue... Um, really, because and it's not just because you know always when people put like oh best acting compilation it's always monologues because people think that saying a lot of dialogue is good acting and I was I was specifically thinking that <laughs> while watching this movie like I'm not gonna say this is the best scene but then she actually but it is. started yes because she started emoting it wasn't just her reading off a paper no 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 there she was, was there telling so a many story. emotions telling an entire yes. story in that one speech and I was like holy shit. And then, like, what, five minutes later, you have that end scene, which, once again, it's it's the entire character of Pearl condensed into one minute uh, without any dialogue, with just music playing over her first happy, then kind of manic, and then tortured face. It's just, it's, yeah. it's the entire, like I said, entire character of Pearl distilled into that one fucking scene. So, first you have, you have that, the actress... Like, really, really committing to the character with the monologue. And then you have the masterful directing choice to, like, I'm not going to call cut because she's in character. Let's see where this goes. And just <laughs> keep smiling, Pearl. Keep smiling. See, I, I would have wanted more so of that. Genius. 
Yes, but I would have wanted more of that throughout the entire movie, though. Because it feels like it's only those two things. Like, when she breaks down after the, 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 the rejection at the, the church, yeah. it feels like she's overacting instead. Because yeah, the, the crying is too much. I know much. what you mean. Yeah. It sort of fits Pearl, sort of. Exactly. But she, she turned it up one or two notches too much. I don't know if I agree with that because, and I think that ruined it. That's also because because of uh, you know, it's really only hinted at, but that there is something wrong with Pearl. Obviously, since she's prepared to kill. By her By then, family. she's burned her mother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, but you know, if you just like the projectionist guy, you get this like there's this there's this bad feeling revolving around Pearl as a character. Um, yeah. So, so I, I, I think that a lot of a lot of her, especially around her mother, or around other people, which is mostly around other people, she's putting on an act. Sure. And even she's even masking. when she's even when she's crying, um, she's like hamming it up because that's all she's ever done. If that Maybe. makes any sense. Though I would, that would have been one of the few raw moments, in my opinion. It should have been one of the few raw moments. Because yeah. as she's getting rejected, her being dragged off stage, that feels real. That feels like it matches the, the, the vibe it should have. Yeah. The energy level, so to speak. Yeah. But the aftermath, when she's sitting on the stairwell I know. outside. And she just... That, she, it, it, t- she turned it up two, two notches too much. Yeah. She went almost full retard. <laughs> I see what you're saying, and I I kind of agree. But I got I got. However, say, the, I didn't mention that properly. The on stage rejection, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when they're driving, the, I can do more. I can do more. Yeah, just, I'm a star. Yeah, oh. that is good. I, I the dancing was awkward, but <laughs> that's not her <laughs> fault. Probably, <laughs> I don't know if they planned that or they had just asked her to do some shit until they pulled the curtains and the other ones arrive. No, I think it was. Uh, I, I, it looked choreographed. I think it was choreographed. Yeah, sort of, but it's it's awkward as fuck. And also, that's also <laughs> just also great uh, that she, she's imagining the war in the background because that's obviously not happening. No, uh, I, I, I just know. Thought, I just I just also thought that was like a, a a nice touch of that you know that inner turmoil kind of getting out. Uh, she's getting it out of her with the dancing, like yeah, and, maybe. And, and it adds to the theme of her husband being at war. You know. Yeah. Um, I thought that was great. Um. And I gotta say, yeah, like, as much as I'm talking, like, yeah, this these two last scenes are what really does it for me. If they hadn't been um, as amazing as they were, I would have still gave this movie, like, three or three and a half stars. Because I still liked all the stuff before, even though it was a little slow. I liked uh, all of it. Um, I liked parts of it. I liked details, I think. Was there anything? I liked, I liked the gator. <laughs> yeah. Xena, or whatever her name was. E- e- even though... Maybe I just don't remember, but it looked more fake in this one than in X. I don't know. It's oh, probably, I don't it's remember. It's probably the same. So I'm just thinking about no, it. It's, I know it's, a fake it's, it's smaller in this one, which makes sense. Oh, right. Because it's, it's much, younger. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it uh, might be that why that might be why it looks weird. Yeah. Uh, well, but, and I, I mean, I do like, I do like some details. I do like the whole she's. She she feels like she can't get away unless she well kills her parents and she's obviously willing to put her father out of misery, which in in that setting seems like a good thing to do, especially considering what she's planning on doing. Because sure. if she leaves yeah. when the mother dies, we, we don't know how or who or what will die first. But I don't know if feeding him to the croc is the right thing. It would have been a nice. Yeah, that's Who's also seen? like very early in the movie. She's like, "I could just put you out of your misery, you know. We don't yeah. have both me and mom would be happy, and you would be in right. pain, and you know." There's and then once again. I remember the detail now that that kind of fucked me up. Um, the first thing we see with her is her stabbing the the. Oh, the yeah. I was about to say duck, but it's a goose, right? Yeah. It's, it's it doesn't really make of. sense. Well, Until she, is... she, in the monologue, tells us that she's been killing small animals. Yeah, which is a classic psychopath treat. Tra- yes, yeah. we've talked about that before in yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Dahmer episodes. Yes. So <laughs> that is also like it's it's again it's hinted that she's something's wrong with her, but it doesn't actually culminate in the, in anything until 
the very end. Yeah, and that's also something I haven't I haven't mentioned yet. But that's also uh, this is yeah, like you said, this is a this spiraling out of control, you know, a downfall into insanity kind of movie. And I love those kind of stories of people going mad. Sure, those are one of, some of my favorite. They're movies so are interesting. That. Yeah. Um, so that's also why I kind of I was already like, oh, it's gonna be one of these movies. Oh, I'm in for this this trip down into hell, you know. So if you don't like those kind of stories, then yeah, you probably won't like this as much. But I guess I expected more of a revenge story kind of thing, more similar to X. Yeah, and like I said, I I expected and it as perhaps well. Perhaps that threw me off too much. Yeah. But for me, it didn't throw me off. I accepted it for what it was, and and then we had that 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 last act or really the the last few scenes that really really amped it up for me yeah so i i for me i <coughs> yeah, i i loved it so much it's, i think uh, i need i need to watch it again i need to see it in another setting perhaps maybe i need to rewatch x as well to get more of the connections yes i i was planning on doing that as well but i haven't had time yet for um, now, my my rating on Letterbox is gonna stay at two and a half because I can't really, I can't I can't justify it to be high right now. You can't justify it to be high right now. Higher, a higher <laughs> score. Okay. Higher. I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I and I am gonna completely justify that this is the sixth best movie I've seen this year in a very very strong year. Yeah, yeah. This is for me. This is better than Prey. This is better than Black Phone. This is better than You Won't Be Alone. It's it's Ooh, better. Than... I don't know if I'll think it's better than Black Phone though. I really like Black Phone. <sighs> yeah, I I really like Black Phone as well. But <laughs> nope. This is better than this is better than nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's better than uh, eighty three of the movies I've seen this year, basically. Because it's on the sixth spot of eighty nine movies, the only movies that are better this year um, are The Northman, of course. It's I yeah. I really doubt I'm gonna watch a movie that beats that one this year. I really doubt it. <laughs> then of course Top Gun Maverick. Um, oh yes. My kind of outlier here is the third best this year is Jackass Forever, but that's just because I'm a huge Jackass fan. Yeah. Um, and then Licorice Pizza, and then The Innocents. The Ushildige. That's my fifth best movie this year. I can sort of see that. But yeah. It's not mine. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, yes. That's something we. I, I'm just going to tease, like, the end of the year episode here. Our discussion about the what, best movies we watched in 2022 is going to be interesting. Yeah. Because we have very different top tens. Yes, I don't know yours. Even though yes. we have. Well, you have some similarities, we have yeah. very different ones as well. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, we're we're kind of done with Pearl here. Uh, yes, but I'm just gonna it, say we should. It do... obviously requires some more thought for me. Definitely. Yeah, and I. I can... need to. I need to rewatch it. Yeah, and I will recognize that a lot Cause of. Literally, we started recording five minutes after I finished the movie. Yeah, and I saw it yesterday. So I haven't had time to digest it. Yeah, I've, I've had a day to uh, digest it. That, that might be yeah. why. Yeah. Could be. Um, we'll bring it up in the next episode. Just have a short recap of what you actually think of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but that would be on Patreon, though. Yes, exactly. And we should bring that up before we end this episode. That, of course, we're going to do a companion piece this episode on patreon.com slash don't make a scene, where we do an exclusive episode every week, which is kind of a companion piece to our free episode. And we have a discussion. Connected this. or not, but, you know, it's, it's got to be there. <laughs> what? Because connected or not, because sometimes they don't oh. really have a good connection. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, sometimes it's very flimsy. Um, yeah. But I was thinking, since now we're talking about Pearl, um, we should, and there's not really, I mean, a perfect companion piece would be X, but we've already yeah, done that. So. we've already done that. So. Yeah. What we should do instead, then, is to talk about Ty West, because he's a very Ooh. interesting director. Um, he has done some really, really bad movies, like, uh, and, and I've only really seen, like, the bad movies he's made. So that's, and I, I know we discussed this when we talked about X, that I was like, how is this going to be like, why are people so excited about X? It's it's directed by Ty West. 
But now having seen X and having seen Pearl, I was, I'm, I'm like, okay, so Ty West is a very interesting director. Uh, I am uh, yeah. I definitely, I definitely want to check out more of his stuff. And this was also this was his first movie in like uh, eight of uh, six years or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, X and Pearl together. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so I think we're just gonna talk about Ty West. Um, we're gonna pick a specific movie. <coughs> for because yes, we'll pick them. a movie to base it on because we can't talk about all of them. Yeah. So that's but, gonna be our um, companion yeah. piece, talking about Ty West and. Uh, so, and, uh, if you want to find out what we think about him in general and the specific movie we choose, check out the episode that will be up on Patreon on Monday, probably. Yes. Yes. Usually it's on Mondays. Usually on Mondays. And also, I just want to say then quickly um, before we end this. Speaking of the end of the year episode, um, I think we should do it like a like a like a mini uh, like a Oscars uh, oh, awards thing. Yeah, we can we do a ceremony. Best actor, <laughs> best actress, you know, best music or whatever. It, it, that would be fun, especially now that I know who I'm going to put as best actress. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> we will have to set up a proper. Um, lists and shit but yes yeah yeah we're we're hit we're teasing it right now there will be a spoiler cast award show the uh the uh the the the, 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 the spoiler awards or something yeah something yeah. stupid like that um but that's we'll that's, get back to you on that yeah, one <laughs> that's for like after christmas so don't uh, yes don't hold your breath <laughs> no but until then Thank you so much for listening. Once again, check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene to get uh, our exclusive episodes and also to support us in our independent podcast adventure. Um, but also, you know, just check out the free episodes. They're available on all pi- podcast platforms, including YouTube and Apple Podcast and Spotify. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye. The Spoiler Cast is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It is hosted by Tobias Vidin and Rebecca Vidin. Produced and directed by Tobias Vidin. Executive producer is Annika Vidin and Laura Kinney. Also a huge shout out to all our patrons. Laura Kinney, Mom, Dad, Mom and Mac. If you want to join our Patreon, check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Exclusive episodes, commentary tracks, and much, much more. Support independent podcasting.